Rebuilding a model steam plant, this is part 5. After trying various boiler steam engine combinations, I am reverting back to using a Stuart S50 and a Stuart 1010V steam engine. With the Stuart 501 boiler, which will be fine for the job, and also looks more or less in scale with the engines. One of my ideas of going over the top with a 504 boiler, a Stuart beam engine, as well as an S50 and a Stuart 10V, was abandoned as the finished steam plant would have been impractically large and far too heavy. You have to ask the question, where do I put it when I'm not playing with it? And by that I mean the steam plant. There's a fine line between something looking good and something that just looks ridiculous. It's all a matter of personal taste and scale. The boiler's too big, the beam engine's too big, the other two engines are too small, and, frankly, it just doesn't look good, so I'm having a rethink. I sold the yellow S50 to a young man called James Evans, and I did mention at the time that the drain taps fitted to the cylinder were for decorative purposes only. They didn't work properly, they're actually in a very bad position and jammed up against the cylinder. I did notice on a video that James made when he ran this engine that he had actually forced one of them open. If you're watching this video, James, I will repeat what I told you when you came to pick the engine up. Those drain cocks are not to be used. And if you force them open like you showed on the video, you will eventually break them off. The worry being that you would leave the threaded part in the hole in the cylinder. This number 10V has drain cocks, as you can see, stuck in the cylinder. They vastly overscale and they have pipes soldered into them. I'm going to dispense with these drain cocks and block up the holes because on such a small engine they're not really required. This was the original boiler fitted to the plant, the PM Research boiler. I removed this from the steam plant fairly early on. As I rebuild this plant I'm going to be using mainly Stuart components. For the life in me I cannot understand the logic of this. The engine has a normal Stuart flywheel, and it also has a Mamod flywheel fitted. And it's the smaller Mamod flywheel that drives the generator. And in order for this small flywheel to drive the generator at the correct speed, the engine is going to be revving much higher than it would if the larger flywheel was used to drive the generator via the belt. Besides, this is so obviously a Mamod part, I removed it from the engine and it's gone in a box somewhere, never to be seen again. Once I got rid of the small Mamod flywheel, equilibrium and balance was restored to the universe and once again the Stuart number 10V actually looked like a number 10V. In this clip I'm giving the engine a test run using compressed air and it seems to run ok, although the slide valve is blowing slightly over the ports. And what does this mean? The problem is some of the air has been blown straight to exhaust so it's not giving the engine much power. It will also be very wasteful in the amount of steam that it uses. Very shortly I'm going to do a ground up rebuild on this engine. But the strip down and rebuild of the Stuart number 10V will not be in this series because this is rebuilding a model steam plant. I'll be making a companion series to this one, and it will be called Rebuilding a Stuart No. 10V Steam Engine. An interesting feature of this steam plant are the plinths that support the dynamo and the two engines. They're actually cast from some sort of plastic material. And a bit of thought has gone into this. If you have a close look, you will see that the engine sits over a depression. This depression catches any oil and water given out by the engine. The drain cock pipes also fed into this area. I'm doing away with that, I don't want any drain cocks on this engine. As I mentioned earlier, I just feel that they are so unnecessary on small engines. And besides which, they also usually leak and dribble anyway. In this clip I'm giving the engine a preliminary clean, mainly to get rid of all the hairs that are stuck to it. Are they cat hairs, dog hairs? They're not from me. These are quite short hairs and they're stuck to everything that's oily. Here I'm checking the crankshaft and the good news is this engine is very well made indeed. The crankshaft is true, the flywheel is externally true 
which is the important thing, but the inner part of the flywheel is not 100% concentric. I want to have a look at the physical condition of the internal part of the engine, which means that the steam chest cover needs to come off. It's only held on by four 7BA nuts on four 7BA studs. Before proceeding any further, I need a plastic box to put the parts in, and here it is. I have a few of these which are fine for small projects, but for larger projects I usually use food containers. And that way I can make sure that the parts don't get mixed up. After removing the 47BA nuts, the steam chest cover was stuck to the steam chest. And at this point I was really hoping that it wasn't silicone rubber. I'm using the normal method, but be aware these things are really sharp and always keep your hand behind the cutting edge, never in front of it. I'm just using this blade to break the seal between the steam chest cover and the steam chest. Because this engine is so small, I don't need to tap the blade, but a quick word of warning about that, if you ever tap these blades with a small hammer, always wear eye protection, because they're very hard steel and they could potentially shatter. The gasket was a very strange, thick, sticky type of gasket, so I used the blade to run all the way around the edge to separate the cover from the steam chest. As you can see, the gasket is past its best and will need replacing, but I was going to do that in any case. Now you can clearly see the slide valve, and it's not looking too bad. There's a little bit of rust inside the steam chest. I'll take a closer look at that as I rebuild the engine. The next part of the job is to separate the steam chest from the cylinder. But before I do that, I need to disconnect the eccentric rod. And that is as far as I'm going with the engine stripped down in this series, which is called Rebuilding a Model Steam Plant. Rebuilding the engine will be in a new series, and that will be called Rebuilding a Stuart Models No. 10V Steam Engine. The Rebuilding a Model Steam Plant series will continue as well. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.